Thank you so much for having me and these very nice words at the beginning before I even said anything. <laughs> um, and yeah, as you mentioned, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about one very particular issue um, that we at Tibet Initiative have been working on in the past um, weeks and months, uh, which are colonial boarding schools in uh, Tibet. Um, and this is a strategy by China to eradicate Tibetan identity from the very beginning, from the very early age. Um, there are numbers by one uh, US organization um, that approximately 800,000 Tibetan children between six and 18 years yeah. are living in colonial boarding schools at the moment. And that means that 78% of Tibetan students are in these schools between six and 18. And for four and five year old children, um, we don't have exact numbers, but also there probably are a few hundreds of thousands um, in these um, boarding schools. These schools specifically target Tibetans and other so-called ethnic minorities. If you compare it with the rate of Chinese students in boarding schools, uh, that rate is dramatically lower. Uh, this whole boarding school system was implemented as part of China's school consolidation policy at the beginning of the millennium. Many rural schools all over China were closed down and merged into boarding schools. And then in 2012, in other areas in China, um, these boarding schools were closed and uh, rural schools came back, but not so in the minority regions. In 2015, the state council called for strengthening boarding school construction to realize the long-term stability of the country. So the result was, as I said, that in Tibetan areas, much more children are sent to boarding schools. If you look at whole China, only 14.1% of rural elementary children are boarding uh, in boarding schools. And in the TAR, in the Tibetan Autonomous Region, almost 80% of elementary school children are in boarding schools. These are numbers from 2002. The risk of these schools is that the children are losing their mother tongue and their connection to their cultural identity. As the classes in these schools are in Chinese and they live apart from families and culture. The state council is also very clear about these schools. Um, in 2018, it said, or it called for actively carrying out educational and teaching activities in boarding schools that are conducive to promoting ethnic unity and integration and guide students to widely use the national language, meaning Chinese and school life and learning. Then 2021, the National People's Congress ruled that local regulations permitting schools to use minority languages are incompatible with the Chinese constitution. In the same year, the Minister of Education ordered that all ethnic and rural kindergartens must operate in Mandarin by fall 2021. So all these regulations are also supported by witness statements from Tibet. And I, I would like to quote one elementary school teacher, quote, in my area, it is mandatory to send children aged four and above to boarding school. Usually there are very few Tibetan teachers. The majority are Chinese. So teachers only speak in Mandarin and conduct old school curriculum in Mandarin, including nursery rhymes and bedtime stories. When they join primary school at age seven, Hardly any of them can speak Tibetan. So we see that there is a generation growing up that really forgets their own language. And that's also because parents have no choice. They are compelled to send their children to boarding schools because there is a lack of alternatives, because all of the other schools were closed down. And then in addition to that, there are intimidation and threats that are used to coerce reluctant parents to send their children to such schools. So police officers are coming to villages and threatening parents, fines and post to parents, so that in the end, children have to go to these schools. The results of the boarding schools are emotional and psychological distress, including extreme feelings of loneliness and isolation. There was a survey by a Tibetan researcher in 2016 um, where they interviewed youth attending rural boarding schools in Sunghai, and they found that more than one in three children were experiencing high levels of alienation. They found that Tibetan children developed an inability to connect in a meaningful way with others. Why is that? In these schools, we have um, individual accounts of sexual harassment, bullying, making students to reject their own roots, and contact to family is heavily restricted. 
Uh, in Sichuan, uh, Chinese researchers documented that due to distance and difficult travel, as many as 80% of Tibetan children do not return home during the school year, even for holidays. And also phone calls are regulated um, in some schools, only a few minutes per day are allowed to call home. Other schools, uh, children have to give away their cell phones. There is another study by another Chinese researcher as well on uh, the TRA boarding schools, where this researcher recalls scenes uh, where parents are attempting to visit their children in Lhasa, the boarding school in Lhasa. The parents are shut out of the school grounds and they try to meet their children at a fence at the border of the school, but they are not allowed um, to go in. They are trying to give the children some treats or their necess necessities, but um, this was discouraged by teachers who told the children that they would lose academic points if they went to the fence to do their parents. So I want to end with uh, two quotes of this researcher who did this study um, in the school in Lhasa. Quote one, a girl in the fourth grade told me her parents did not come. I asked her if she wanted her parents to come. She replied that she didn't want them to come. She told her parents not to come to school because points would be deducted if they came to school. She asked, if the points were de not deducted, would you want them to come? She nodded while carrying on cleaning. And quote two, I saw a little boy from second grade talking to a parent across the fence, looking back while talking, frowning, worried that the teacher on duty would catch him and deduct points. The students hardly took things from the parents and ran back. The expression on the little boy's face indicated that he wanted to cry. So these are the stories that are happening in Tibet. And um, this is why we believe that these colonial boarding schools have to be shut down immediately to prevent that Tibetan identity is even eradicated further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, David, would you agree that if we call this is a part of the so-called cultural genocide? Well, this word genocide is very strong, but we are talking about one quad, so Zhu Jianmian. That happens in Tibet, happened it in, in the South Mongolia or in Xinjiang mm -hmm. and so on. Do you know that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, this, I think this is. Um, the strategy of the CCP to um, basically take away uh, people's identity so that then from the very young age, um, Tibetans, Uyghurs, Inner Mongolians um, are somehow brainwashed to think that they are Chinese and Chinese, what they are taught by the CCP is that Chinese means supporting the CCP. So this obviously is, is the goal in Tibet, but all the other regions as well to um, yeah, eradicate the identity and with this also any um, kind of resistance against the regime. Thank you. 